So today's lesson is about trig ratios and special angles. We do that in grade um, 11, but then now in grade 12, we're going to do the special angles with respect to the radians. <clears throat> um, so if we know a right angle triangle that has an angle of theta, all other right angle triangles with an angle of theta are similar and therefore have equivalent ratios. of corresponding sides. The three primary ratios are shown in the diagram to the right and remember that the Sokatoa where I have sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan theta is opposite over adjacent and we're talking about angle theta here which is my angle of interest and then we name the triangle as opposite adjacent and then the hypotenuse is a side that's across from the 9 degree. Another thing that we learned about in la last year is the reference angle. So a reference angle, so an, any angle over 90 has a reference angle. And the reference angle is between 0 and 90 and helps us determine the exact trig ratios um, when we are given an obtuse angle, which is an angle over 90 degrees. The reference angle is an angle between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis. So if I, have, um, if I have a terminal arm in the first quadrant, then obviously my angle and my reference angle are the same. If I have a, a terminal arm in the second quadrant, <clears throat> so this is my principal angle right here, which is angle theta. My reference angle, which is an acute angle, and that is between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis, so that's going to be this one. So in this case, if you look here, this is your reference angle, and this reference angle is an acute angle. Um, if my angle uh, or my terminal arm is in the third quadrant, so that means my angle theta is um, that, big angle right here so that's my principal angle and then my reference angle is going to be between the terminal arm and the closest x-axis so it's going to be here so something that you have to know that if you're looking for the the uh, reference angle so beta in this case in the second quadrant it's pi minus theta if I'm looking for that reference angle in the third quadrant, it's going to be theta minus pi. And in the fourth quadrant, um, because my, my principal angle is this, um, to find the terminal or to find the reference angle, what I have to do is 2 pi minus the principal angle. Okay, because it's almost like you're looking just at that reference angle to complete the circle and to complete the two pi. Okay, so remember that that reference angle is the angle between the terminal arm and the closest x axis. What is the cast tool? So when finding the trig ratios of positive angles, we are rotating clockwise or counterclockwise from 0 to 360. The cast rule helps us determine which trig ratios are positive in each quadrant. So if you're looking at the cast rule, so the cast rule says C, A, S, T, starting with quadrant 4, where C is, and then A. A means all. It means in quadrant 1, all the angles or all the trig ratios are positive. Sine, cosine, and tan are positive. In the second quadrant, it says S, which means the sine 
is positive for all angles in the second quadrant. And that means tan and cosine are negative in the second quadrant. In the third quadrant, it says tan. So tan is positive for all angles in the third quadrant. So that means sine and cosine are negative. And in the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive, which means sine and tan are negative in the fourth quadrant. And so it's always remember, always remember that uh, the cast rule, because let's say if I give you sine theta equals to um, negative 0.345, right, and I ask you to find angle theta, you need to know in what quadrant you have to find that angle theta. And because sine is negative, that means you have two answers. Now, you're going to have two answers anyway. Uh, but it, you know that there's going to be an answer in quadrant 3 and an answer in quadrant 4 because sine is negative in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So you're going to have to look for two answers, one in quadrant 3 and one in quadrant 4. And remember that the calculator only gives you one answer. And sometimes even the calculator gives you a negative angle which we want to always write our angles as positive, okay? When you are measuring the angle, the angle has to be measured from the x-axis counterclockwise. So if you get a negative, so that will give you a positive theta, a positive angle. But let's say if you are measuring clockwise, that will give you a negative angle, okay? So it will be the same, it will be... The, these two angles are equivalent, right? Except one is in positive, one is in negative. If you ever get a negative angle theta, you always have to write it as a positive theta. And then to do that, you do 2 pi minus the, the negative angle. So it will be 2 pi. Let's say, let's say I have negative, uh, negative uh, 7 pi over 2. Let's say, then you're going to do 2 pi minus 7 pi over 2, and that's going to be, um, sorry, not 7 pi over 2. Let's do it 7 pi over 5. Then that's going to be 10 pi minus 7 pi, so that's going to be 3 pi. Okay, let's say, I'm just giving you a quick example here. Okay, so you always have to report your angle as a positive angle. And then you do that by subtracting 2 pi. All right. So remember that there are multiple angles that have the same trig ratio. You can use reference angles in the cast rule to find them. Remember that there is going to be at least, right, for most of them, there is going to be um, two answers that for each ratio. Okay. Now, there is a case where you only have one, and there is a case where you have three. So that would be like when you when you get like the zero and 360. So let's say if I give you um, sine theta equals zero, right? In this case, you're going to have three answers, and it's going to be zero degree, two pi, and pi. Okay? If I give you... Um, um, sine theta equals negative 1, you're going to get only one answer, which is the 270 degrees. Okay? And that's when I said, like, you, these are only the special cases, right? So all other cases, you're going to have two answers. Just one second. All right. All right. So finding exact trig ratios for special lines. So we're going to start by drawing the two special triangles, which we talked about these two triangles in the previous um, lesson. So let's say I have the pi over 4. 
and we said that you have one one square root of two and then if we have the other triangle And then we have one square root of three and two. All right, find the exact value of each given trig ratio. So in order for me to find that one, so then of 11 pi over six, 11 pi over six, that is going to be in the fourth quadrant. So remember that 12 pi over 6 is the 2 pi, right? So 12 pi over 6 is the 2 pi. So 11 pi over 6 is, is basically right here. Right? So that's going to be the 11 pi over 6. Now, in order for me to determine the um, exact ratio, I need to find the reference angle. And then the reference angle, to, so to find that reference angle beta, I have to do beta is equal to 2 pi minus um, 11 pi over 6, and that's going to be pi over 6. So my reference letter, my reference angle is going to be pi over 6. And because uh, we're looking at a reference, uh, reference angle of pi over 6, that means I have to look at the second triangle. And then if I'm looking at tan pi over 6, tan is opposite over uh, adjacent, so it's going to be 1 over square root of 3. So that's going to be 1 over square root of 3. But because tan in the fourth quadrant is negative, my answer is going to be negative 1 over square root of 3. It's okay to leave it like this, but then if you want to write it as negative square root of 3 over 3, that's also acceptable. All right, um, 5 pi over 6, so that's going to be in the second quadrant. Again, always remember that you have the pi and then you have the 2 pi, right? So you're always referencing to these two. So if I have um, 5 pi over 6, so that is going to be in this quadrant right here. And this is 5 pi over 6. This is my principal angle, 5 pi over 6. Now, if I'm um, finding the reference angle beta, so to find the reference angle beta, you're going to do beta equals 2 pi minus 5 pi over 6. So remember, in the second quadrant, you do pi minus the principal angle. So that's going to be 6 pi minus 5 pi. So that's going to be pi over 6. And again, my reference angle is pi over 6. I'm looking at sine in the second quadrant. So sine of pi over 6 is opposite over uh, hypotenuse. So that's going to be 1 over 2. And because sine in the second quadrant is positive, I'm going to leave it as positive. Okay, let's look at more examples. So 5 pi over 4. So if I'm looking at 5 pi over 4, cosine of 5, 5 pi over 4, so that's 4 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. So that's going to be in the third quadrant because 4 pi over 4 is pi, and I'm adding pi over 4 to it. So it's going to be in this quadrant right here. And that's my principal angle, 5 pi over 4. To find the reference angle, you do in this case um, pi, sorry, theta minus pi. So in this case, it's going to be 5 pi over 4, take away pi, and that's going to be pi over 4. So that means my reference angle is pi over 4. Going back to my special triangles, I'm looking at cos of pi over 4. 
cos of pi over 4 is going to be 1 over square root of 2. Now, because it's in the third quadrant, so let me just write that. Because it's in the third quadrant, cosine is positive or negative? So it's negative, and that's why my answer is going to be negative 1 over square root of 2. Or you can write that as negative square root of 2 over Okay. So after you find your after you find your ratio, you always have to ask yourself in this quadrant: this is it is that ratio positive or is that ratio negative? And then adjust your answer accordingly. Now we're looking at secant three pi over four. Okay, so three pi over four. That's um, four pi over four minus pi over 4, right? That will give me 3 pi over 4. So that means it's going to be, and that's going to be pi and take away pi over 4, right? So that's going to be in the second quadrant. Now, um, to find the reference angle, it's going to be uh, pi minus theta, and that's going to be pi minus 3 pi over 4, and that's going to be pi over 4. I kind of almost, like, I found the answer here. I just want to show you the exact work, okay? So this here, this work here is just for me to know where I'm drawing it, right? But then this work here is to actually find that reference um, angle. So my reference angle is pi over 4. I'm looking for a secant. Secant is 1 over cos. So remember that this is the same thing as 1 over cosine 3 pi over 4. Okay. Uh, so I'm looking at pi over 4, cosine pi over 4, which is 1 over square root of 2. And because I'm looking at the inverse of that, it's going to be the square root of 2. Right? So remember, cosine pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2. If I'm looking at 1 over cosine of pi over 4, that's going to equal to square root of 2. So you reverse you, you res the reciprocal of both sides. Okay. Now, because uh, I'm in the second quadrant, cosine is negative in the second quadrant, so my answer is going to be negative. All right? This is all like my side work. You don't have to write all of that just for me to explain to you what's going on. All right, so always remember to um, check the sign in the coordinates. Find the value of all six trig ratios of 5 pi over 3. So let's first 5 pi over 3. So that is 3 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3, right? Or or what we can think about it is 6 pi over 3. So that's 6 pi over 3, take away pi over 3, right? Why 6 pi over 3? Because that's 2 pi, right? So 2 pi take away pi over 3, that's going to be 5 pi over 3. So that means it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. So it's going to be right here. <laughs> And which means my reference angle right here is pi over 3. Okay, because I'm looking at pi over 3, so remember the triangle, the special triangle, pi over 3, and that was square root of 3. That's 1 and that's 2. So let's start with 
sine 5 pi over 3. Because it's in the third quadrant, uh, fourth quadrant, sorry, sine is negative, and that's going to be sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine in the fourth quadrant is positive, so I'm going to leave it as positive. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, over hypotenuse so that's going to be 1 over 2. And then tan in the fourth quadrant is negative, so that's going to be negative. And then it's going to be opposite over um, adjacent, and that's going to be square root of 3 over 1. Now, um, if I'm looking at the reciprocal, so I'm looking at cosecant 5 pi over 3, which is equal to negative 2 over square root of 3, secant 5 pi over 3, that's going to be equal to 2, and then cotan of 5 pi over 3, is going to equal to negative 1 over square root of 3. So all what I did is I reciprocal the answer that I got for the um, sine, cosine, and 10. All right. So Justin's flying a kite at the end of a 50-meter string. The sun is directly overhead and the string makes an angle of pi over 6 with the ground. The wind speed increases and the kite flies higher until the string makes an angle of pi over 3 with the ground. Determine an exact expression of the horizontal distance between the two positions um, of the kite along the ground. So basically, we want an expression to determine the the horizontal distance between the two positions of the kite along the ground. So that means we're going to have to find this right here, an expression for this. So let's look at this triangle here. So if I can find that bottom side for that triangle, and if I can find the bottom side for the blue triangle, and I can subtract the two, then what I would have left, I would have left this the expression and expression for this part. Okay, so let's find the length of the um, the bottom part for the tri the red triangle first. So to find that, this is the adjacent of pi over 6, so we're going to use, so remember that the hypotenuse is 50 meters for both of them, right? And then because I'm looking for the adjacent, then I have to use the cos ratio. So that means cosine pi over 6, let me just write that in red. is equal to, um, we're going to call that x1 over 50. So cosine pi over 6, if you go back to the special triangle that we had here, okay, so pi over 6 is the top angle, and then cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be square root of 3 over 2. So that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2 equals to x1 over 50. And then to find x1, we multiply by 50, so it's going to be 50 square root of 3 over 2, that's equal to x1, or 25 square root of 3 equals to x1. Now we're going to do the same thing, but with a blue triangle. So with a blue triangle, again, I'm looking for the adjacent for pi over 3, so I have to do cosine pi over 3 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cosine pi over 3 is 1 over 2. And then to find x2, I multiply 50 by half, so that's going to be 25 equals to x2. 
Now in order for me to find that yellow highlighted side, we're gonna have to subtract x1 minus x2. And that's going to be 25 square root of three, take away 25. And then you can uh, write this 25 square root of three minus one if you want when you factor out the 25, and that's in meters. So the horizontal distance between the two kites is equal to 25 square root of three minus one meters. All right, let me have any questions.